Okay, here I'm going to start sketching some graphs of some common functions, and I'm going to go through these again pretty quickly, and I'm going to make some pretty rough sketches. So you can always plot points and make it a little bit nicer than what I'm going to. So I see the square root of x plus 3 minus 4. Recall that the square root of x, I'm going to make a little small graph here, the square root of x basically looks like that. So there's the x-axis, there's the y-axis. So remember the plus 3, it's underneath the radical. That's actually going to move the graph of the square root of x. It's going to move it to the left 3 units. And that kind of makes sense if you think about just having the square root of x plus 3 all by itself, right? The square root of x plus 3. If you were to plug in negative 3, you would get 0, right? So that would kind of move it to the left, and then it would increase. The negative 4 that's hanging out on the outside, that's going to move it down 4 units. But then it's going to still have the same uh, shape and the same bend. So instead of starting at 0, 0, it's going to start, so there's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. It's going to start down here at the point negative 3, comma, negative 4. And let's see, okay, so if we plug in x equals 0, we'll get the square root of 3. What is that? That's, I think, if I remember correctly, like 1.7 or something. So 1.7 minus 4, that's going to be what, like a little bit below 2, so my graph is going to look pretty rough here. I think my arithmetic there is correct. Um, sounds okay to me. So it's still going to have that bendy shape, not the best graph in the world. Um, a more rough graph, it would just look something like that. So again, it still has the same shape as that square root function. Um, still has the same shape as the square root function. It's basically just been shifted three units to the left and four units down. So again, plot some points if you want a prettier graph. Okay, so for 53, same idea. Okay, so the parent function here would be x squared. And recall that x squared is a parabola, which opens upwards. It just looks like a u. A couple things here. So now we've got this minus 3 on the inside. That's going to move it to the right 3 units. So it's going to move it to the right 3 units. The plus 2 is going to move it up 2 units. Now we have this negative 1 half out front. So the negative, recall, is going to flip the graph uh, upside down. It's going to reflect it. And this 1 half out front that's going to make the parabola wider. Okay, so a couple things going on here. So I think, okay, I'm going to go one, two, three units to the right, one, two units up. I know it's going to open downwards because of the negative. The one half is going to make it a little bit wider. So let's see, if we plug in x equals zero, what's that going to give us? Um, x equals zero. I'm just basically finding where it crosses the y-axis, just to plot one extra point. So x equals 0, we have negative 3 squared, which will be 9. 9 times negative 1 half, that would be negative 9 halves, plus 2. Well, negative 9 halves, that's what? Negative 4.5 plus 2, that's negative 2 and a half. So there's 1, 2, 3, it's going to cross down there. You could always find the x-intercept by um, setting all of this equal to zero and solving. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit lazy here and not do that, so you can, again can check my graph. But it's just going to be a parabola that opens downwards. Again, that's going to be the point, zero comma, negative 2.5 or negative 5 halves. And again, all I'm really interested in in these videos is just helping you remember how things move around, right? shifts it to the right three units, up two units, the negative flips it, and then the one half in this case is going to make it wider.